Hello everyone, before we start the video, here's a quick reminder that you can join my Discord server. We are building a nice Dota 2 community, so be part of it. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can click the subscribe button and now let's get started with the video. In this video, I want to talk about Monkey King. I recently played him the last 6 game. I won every single game. I think he's pretty strong at the moment. I only play him in this safe lane. Used to play him a lot in the mid lane, but since I swapped into the carry player role, I didn't really play him in mid lane the last months. So this video is, like I said, mainly gonna focus on safe lane landing stage. And then in the next video coming tomorrow or the day after, I will talk about like where do you farm, how do you farm. What do you do? Like, how do you approach team fights? Wh what did you need to look for, and so on. So now we're just gonna get started with the game, and I show you how I lane with the hero and why I pick it, and when do I think it's a good game to pick him. So let's go. So first of all, when do you pick Monkey King? Um, for me, I always look out. Do they have a pause four that is a melee hero? If yes, it's already a good indicator that you can pick Monkey King. Here in this game I had last pick, like my mid laner picked before since we had like a doom mid. So I could afford to last pick my hero and since I saw they have a bristle back, I was sure okay it's probably bristle back off lane, like that's the most common thing. If it would be somehow bristle mid then they would have gotten like a Magnus mid or something. I don't know but yeah. So here it was Bristol offline I think was pretty obvious to me and therefore I adjust my starting build always like this if I play against media heroes in the lane I go up a venom two branches a fire fire and I get a shared tango from my support if you play in a bracket or something where your support is not giving you a tango because you're not mid lane and they refuse to give it to you you can still go for this build and after the bounty runes you immediately buy a set of tango and uh, parry it to yourself. So I think the build is always the best build you can go against melee heroes. Like Armor Venom, very strong to chase and then the stats that you can actually man up. Since the hero is very weak at level 1, like a lot of people overestimate his ability. Like the Jingo stacks are not that strong at level 1. So you should be a bit careful to man up. And when you have like a bit more stats and the fire fire, it's more easy to man up and they will help you out throughout the laning stage. In most of the games you want to buy a magic wand anyway, so getting the two branches is pretty valuable in the beginning. So one more thing I forgot to mention. If you manage to get Jingo stacks early on, um, either from the rune fight, like here I got them from the rune fight, if you can use your Jingo stacks to deny creeps, like you do about 100 damage with this build, so you basically have a free deny of every creep you can get on. Don't really need them to use them as a heal because you heal like almost nothing with level 1 Jingu. Also the most heal you get is from your boundless strike with your Jingu mastery combined. So since you're level 1 you're not gonna have boundless strike and Jingu mastery. Therefore just use them as a deny tool. By the way if you play against uh, heroes where you can't get Jingu stacks at level 1 take boundless strike and secure the range creep with your boundless strike. It's pretty easy to do. So for your level 1, it's basically playing as passive as you can and try to get all the creeps, get all the denies, like try to get the most out of your lane. Um, like I said, you're very weak in level 1, so going for any kill play is not really an option. Therefore just chill a bit. Yeah, I was landing with Undying, so Undying is like the bully hero anyways, so he can man up to them and fight them while they can't really fight back. So I got a free level 2 and your big power spike in the laning stage comes with level 3 when you get 2 points in Jingo Mastery and have a point in Boundless Strike. But other than that, you at level 2 you can also like be kinda aggressive if they have a lane where they can't really threaten you. Like here Sniper Bristleback are not that threatened to me. So I can be very aggressive and the biggest strength about Monkey King in the laning stage is when you manage to pull ahead you can be very very aggressive and basically dominate 
every laning scenario. So I had to restart the re um, replay because I had this annoying bug I just saw it where you don't really see the order text. So I just restart the replay right now. And um, for your laning stage items, I get a magic stick here just because I lane against the Bristol back. You want to get a magic one in the end anyways. So having this stick here is pretty valuable against all this queer space. And after that, try to get your boots as quickly as possible. Like here I bought stick, my own set of tango, so I have some region. And then I immediately rush boots. And what boots are going to allow you to do is they're going to allow you to chase more. You get your jingo stacks way easier. And therefore you can be way more aggressive. So I think I'm firing out my boots right now. I hear they're coming boots and magic one. So that's just, boots are the items you really want to get as early as possible. So for my skill build, I really like to max out Jingo and your Boundless Strike. I'm not the type of Monkey King fan where you max out three that I mean three and then Primal Spring obviously is like one ability. Just because I think you can be very strong in the next stage where you can get Jingo stacks and you wanna get your Jingo uh, maxed out as quickly as possible so you have the longer counter duration and you obviously get the most bonus damage and lifesteal and I'm a really big fan of getting boundless strike and jingo mastery and not really bothering the tree dance you can get a value point if you have to use it to like catch up here in this lane was not that needed I think I get it at level 6 my tree dance you don't want to skill your older level 6 anyways so getting a point uh, at tree dance at level 6 or level 5 is totally fine Sometimes at level 4 if you needed to get a kill or something. But other than that, go for level 4, 2, 0, 2. It's really strong and really helpful. Also your stun duration goes up and your damage. And what a lot of people kind of underestimate is that when you have the boundless strike, you can farm a lot with it and farm very fast. Like people used to uh, max Primal Spring to farm like creep camps. Which makes sense, I mean it's 100 mana and 350 damage. Also the cooldown is lower than Boundless Strike. But I think you just get more out of it when you max out your Boundless Strike. So here Sni Sniper stepped out of position and I'm chasing him to get Jingo Snakes up. I'm not gonna kill him but since I have my Jingo Snakes now they kinda need to play passive. You need to keep in mind that your Jingo Mastery lasts longer than your cooldown of Boundless Strike. So you can use your bonus strike to get the Jingo stacks and then if you're in a scenario like I am here I could go and hit creeps here to like heal or get a last hit but I'm willing to miss a last hit to bonus strike them with my Jingo stacks it does a ton of damage and it will gonna result in a sniper kill here so I'm take this last hit even so I don't even miss a last hit okay I miss one but you get the point right like you wanna save your jingo stacks for a situation like that you don't really wanna waste them by hitting creeps like sometimes you can't really go for a play like that but when there's the option like try to keep an eye for that and it will give you a lot of kills because a lot of people underestimate that you can actually get your boundless like use your boundless strike to get the jingo stacks and then while your jingo stacks are running you can get a cooldown on your boundless strike to like do a ton of damage so here at 5 minutes I know bounty runes are spawning therefore there will be no sniper in this lane he's also fighting undying like I see him at the moment but I would also assume that uh, sniper would not be here and he's gonna take bounty runes so Bristolback has just got his boots but I have Orb of Venom and I have more movement speed than him therefore I am gonna chase him I take a ton of damage from his crisp base but I'm willing to take the damage to get my jingo stacks up and then I can heal anyways like this situation is probably a situation everyone encountered in this life already now I took like 250 HP from Bristol and I lost like what 400 or a bit more maybe and since I have my Jingo stacks and my bonus strike now what I can do is I can go to the creep wave boom full HP so I remove this HP while for me it's like nothing I lose I lose 100 mana but since I have a magic wand, I have basically infinite mana on this lane. Therefore, I'm totally fine with just doing trades like that, where they are unfavorable for me at the time. But when the creep wave arrives, I'm gonna stun and basically full HP again. 
and that's also the only effect that you get when you max out Jingo and your bonus strike. If you go for the max out tree dance build, we have like one three one. You can't do this play obviously. That's why I also think like this skill is just way stronger in a lane where you can abuse the fact that you can get the Jingo mastery for free. So for my items now, I bought my power traits. I'm not really the biggest fan of face boots on Monkey King. I mean, sure, it makes sense in the term of chasing, but I like to play him as a very farm heavy hero. I feel like a lot of people underestimate this hero in the early late game and also in the very late game. Like, this hero is very strong, all his talents are super good. Therefore, I really, really like to, like, go battle fury as an item and just farm 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 be very farm heavy so for actually building up your stacks very easily you kinda need to wait for your opponent to come closer to Kubev to get a last hit and if you get a hit in and then get an easy second hit in as well that's the time where you can easily chase like I do here I, I got a hit a bit late but we were so far ahead so it doesn't matter I can easily chase, take out Bristol back, Undying Dive, but it's fine, and I can, the power of my Orb of Venom, I can just Dive Sniper here, kill him too. So you're gonna see the same, um, the same play again, basically where he is in the creep wave, and what I do is I get a free hit on him, and then I can easily get a second one, and here I can go for the Jingos, even though I will take a ton of damage, like I'm hitting his back, uh, the crisp rays are gonna stack up a lot and do a lot of damage. It's totally fine for me. I'm gonna miss one range creep now, but I did quite a lot of damage to him. I make him use a lot of mana, and now I'm just gonna wait for the creep wave to arrive. And I'm gonna aim my boundless strike to hit the creep wave and hit him as an optimal play. So I do a ton of damage, get a free... Uh, Free creep wave, heal up to full HP, going for my Jingus again, and now I have to be a bit careful that they don't chase me down. But sometimes you just gotta man up with your hero. And barely escape too. Okay, <laughs> here we got Bristol, gotta get a stun on sniper and I think yeah we're gonna kill him too. Or not. Okay, we're not gonna kill him. Ah yeah, we saw Klinks coming in, so I back out. And I'm just gonna chill now a bit until I see clinks on the map somewhere and then I can go back to farming. So this is gonna be the last play of the video. I see the Bristleback at the side shop and I'm just going at him to get my Jingo stacks up again. And then since clinks is TPing in, first of all I force a rotation towards bottom lane. Already a good play if I get out. And what I do now is I wanna disengage a bit from clinks. And obviously take the illusion rune, like I'm an agility hero, so il illusions are very useful to me to farm. And then I still have jingle stacks running and I don't go for this creep camp, which like probably most players would do. Instead I TP bottom and try to get a kill on AM. Not gonna get it in the end, but since I'm top lane now, I can push their safe lane tower. Like I wish Sand King was a bit more awake here, and then if he would have stunned, we probably would have killed AM at this play here. So my rotation would have worked out even better. But now he backed out and I tried to chase him down but I couldn't find him. And when my jingle stacks were running out I am like okay this kill is not happening. Therefore just stun the creep wave to kill it very quickly and now we can push with the tow uh, push the tower. Also rotation is very good because the catapults are coming. That's something a lot of people don't really do. or like. This is a play a lot of high MMR people do, but if you look like in low MMR brackets, no one gives a fuck about the catapults or the siege creeps, whatever you want to call them. If you do a rotation together with them, you can easily take a tower. Like every hero turns into a tower pusher when you have a siege creep for you hitting the tower. So that's it then for today's video. I hope you could learn something about Monkey King that you maybe didn't do or maybe just played a bit wrong or got like some item build idea that I showed here. I Like I said, I wanna do the mid to late game version of this hero probably tomorrow or the day after. 
Uh, if you think the video was useful, you can leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Um, other than that, whenever you watch it, have a good day, have a good night, and I hope I see you guys in the next video too. Goodbye, goodbye.